Hello all, welcome to this video on machine learning. Today I'll be talking about overfitting, regularization and logistic regression. Let us begin with overfitting. Overfitting is a modeling error that occurs when a model is too closely fit with the training set and it gets a dramatic difference of fitting in case of testing set. Overfitting the model generally takes the form of making an overly complex model to explain model behavior in the data under study. The image given here shows an overfitted data. Now let us see an example to understand this better. Assume that we are trying to build a model that predicts tomatoes in images. Model A is red, circle, green star shape on top and a few water droplets. Model B is red and circle. The problem with model A is that not all tomatoes have water droplets on them. The model is too specific and likely to pick wet tomatoes. It is not generalized well to pick all tomatoes. It will look for water droplets so it cannot predict dry tomatoes in an image. This is overfitting. On the other hand, model B thinks that everything that is red and has a circle shape is a tomato which is not true. This model is too general and is not able to detect the critical features of tomatoes. So this is called as underfitting. Overfitting arises when a model tries to fit the training data so well that it cannot generalize to new observations. Well generalized models perform better on new observations. Now if a model is too complex, than necessary, then it is highly likely we end up with overfitting. Underfit models do not generalize well to both training and test data set. In a supervised learning task, we can detect overfitting by comparing the model accuracy on training and testing data set. If the accuracy on training data set, that is the observations that the model sees, is much higher than the accuracy on test data set, which are the unseen observations, then the model is overfitting. Now the loss that happens here is proportional to the difference between the actual target value and the predicted value. A supervised learning model performs several iterations to minimize this loss by updating the feature weights. However, after some point, model behaves differently on test and training data. Loss just keeps decreasing on training data but starts to increase on test data after some point. So it is crucial to detect this point to create an outstanding machine learning model. Now we look into regularization. Now the main reason for overfitting is making a model more complex than necessary. So if you find a way to reduce the complexity, then the overfitting issue will be resolved. Now regularization adds penalty for higher terms in the model and this controls the model complexity. So if the regularization terms are added, the model tries to minimize both the loss and complexity of the model. Its most commonly used types are L1 and L2. Now the complexity of a model depends on the total number of features which is handled by the L1 regularization or the weights of features which is handled by L2 regularization. Now we look into L1 regularization also known as lasso regression. It is also called regularization for sparsity. As the name suggests, it is used to handle sparse vectors. If we have a high dimensional feature vector space, the model becomes very difficult to handle. L1 regularization forces the weights of uninformative features to be zero. So it acts like a force that subtracts a small amount from the weight at each iteration and thus making the weight zero eventually. Now let us try to understand this better with an example. So we start with the weights and size measurements from a bunch of mice and we split the data into two sets. The red dots which are standing for training data and green dots for testing data. We fit a line to the training data using the least squares which means minimizing the sum of squared residuals. And when we do this, 
even if the line fit the training data very well, it has low bias and if it does not fit the testing data well, it has high variance. Now lasso regression is given by sum of squared residuals plus lambda into the absolute value of slope. Lambda value can have any values from 0 to positive infinity and is determined using cross validation. Now what cross validation does is it will use the initially used training data to generate multiple mini train test splits and use these splits to tune the model further. Now let us look into L2 regularization which is also known as ridge regression. It is also known as regularization for simplicity. If we take the model complexity as a function of weights, the complexity of a feature is proportional to the absolute value of its weights, which is given by y is equal to w1x1 plus w2x2 plus etc plus wnxn. Now the L2 regularization terms will be the sum of squared values, which are w1 square plus w2 square plus etc plus wn squared. Now the ridge regression is given by sum of squared residuals plus lambda into the squared of slopes. Now L2 regularization forces the weights towards zero but it does not make them exactly zero. It acts like a force that removes a small percentage of weights at each iteration without making it as zero. Now there is an additional parameter to tune the regularization term which is called the regularization rate or lambda which we saw in the previous equation. It is a scalar value and it is used to be multiplied with the regularization terms. Now let us look into L3 regularization or elastic net. If we know a lot about all of the parameters in our model, it is easy to choose whether we want to use lasso regression or ridge regression. But in cases where the model has tons of variables, this is not possible. In this cases, we can go for elastic net regression. As in the previous regression cases, it starts with the least squares and combines lasso regression penalty with ridge regression penalty which is given by lambda 1 into absolute variables values of variables 1 to x plus lambda 2 into the sum of squared of variables from 1 to x. This is also given as lasso regression plus ridge regression. Now we can use cross validation on different combinations of lambda 1 and lambda 2 to find the best value. Now we look into logistic regression. This is a classification algorithm that is used where the response variable is categorical. The idea of logistic regression is to find a relationship between features and probability of particular outcome. For example, when we have to predict if a student passes or fails in an exam, when the number of hours spent studying is given as a feature, the response variable has two values that is pass and fail. This type of a problem is referred to as binomial logistic regression where the response variable has two values 0 and 1 or pass and fail or true and false. Multinomial logistic regression deals with situations where the response variable can have three or more possible values. Now we will see why the model chosen is logistic instead of linear. With binary classification, let x be some feature and y be the output which can be either 0 or 1. Now the probability that the output is 1 given its input can be represented as p of y equal to 1 given x. If we predict the probability using linear regression, we can state it as p of x is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x where p of x is given by p of y equal to 1 given x. Now linear regression model can generate the predicted probability as any number ranging from negative to positive infinity, whereas probability of an outcome can only lie between 0 and 1. Also, 
linear regression has considerable effect on outliers as shown in the figure. In order to avoid this problem, log odds function or logit function is used in this case. Logistic regression can be expressed as log of p of x by 1 minus p of x which is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x where the left hand side is called the logit or log odds function and p of x by 1 minus p of x is called odds. The odds signify the ratio of probability of success to the probability of failure. Therefore, in logistic regression, linear combination of inputs are mapped to the log which is odds, the output being equal to 1. Now, if we take an inverse of the above function, we get p of x as e raised to beta 0 plus beta 1 x by 1 plus e raised to beta 0 plus beta 1 x. Now, this is called the sigmoid function and it gives an S-shaped curve as shown in the figure. It always gives a value of probability ranging from 0 to 1. Now, unlike linear regression model that uses ordinary least square for parameter estimation, we'll use a maximum likelihood estimation case here. The maximum likelihood estimate is that set of regression coefficients for which the probability of getting the data we have observed is maximum. So, if we have binary data, the probability of each outcome is simply pi if it was a success and 1 minus pi other case. We have already seen maximum likelihood estimation and its example problems in one of the previous videos. Now for multi-class problems, we will follow a one versus all approach. For example, if we have to predict whether the weather is sunny, rainy or windy, we are dealing with a multi-class problem. We turn this problem into three binary classification problems that is whether it is sunny or not whether it is rainy or not and whether it is windy or not. We run all three classifications independently on the input and the classification for which the value of probability is maximum relative to others is the solution. Now some pros of logistic regression are it is simple, efficient and has low variance. It also provides probability score for observations. Some of its cons are, it doesn't handle large number of categorical features or variables well and require transformation of non-linear features. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.